Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for hanging in there, and uh, maybe for another uh, three hours. Um, so today I'm going to uh, present BCW, which is a substrate uh, that enables uh, buffer-controlled writes to HDDs uh, to significantly relieve the write pressure uh, from the SSDs in the SSD HDD hybrid storage server. So this is a work uh, jointly done with my collaborators from Huazong University of Science and Technology who did all the experiment and implementation and, and who unfortunately uh, could not come. Actually, they are, if, for those of you who don't know, they are at the epic center uh, of this uh, coronavirus epidemic uh, in Wuhan. So they have been uh, in a massive lockdown for the last, uh, for more than a month now. Uh, fortunately, they, uh, those author, my colleagues, uh, inv individually are doing fine. So I uh, keep my uh, thoughts always with them. And also uh, with collaborators from Alibaba Group. I think this is the fifth and the final paper in this uh, conference uh, in which uh, the Alibaba Group play uh, some role, uh, sometimes very important role. Um, so what I'm going to do first is to uh, uh, give you a background about this hybrid storage and then present some of our observations, very interesting ones, uh, uh, including the lopsided uh, uh, device utilization and also the very interesting uh, HDD uh, buffer write behaviors, which in turn motivate us uh, to design this uh, BCW scheme and also a mixed I.O. scheduler that enables the final optimization. And then I'll present some of the results. So um, SSD HDD hybrid storage essentially is to use SDD as cache, write cache, to a, a, a primary storage. And which has emerged to be an inevitable, in fact, probably uh, a very widespread uh, 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 choice for the cloud storage providers, simply because they have the potential to provide very high uh, cost effectiveness uh, and, and potential for high speed and low latency by reaping the benefits of the uh, high performing SSD, but at the same time, the high a large capacity of uh, HDD. So, for example, uh, most of the major uh, cloud storage providers uh, use them uh, very widely. Okay, uh, uh, you know the Microsoft, Azure, Google Cloud, uh, AWS, uh, Alibaba, and so on. So, um, what is interesting is that we observe the the, the production. Uh, 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 server in Alibaba, the Pangu server, which is a, a, a hybrid uh, storage system. So it, it is very clear that the SSD uh, loads are very heavily utilized. Uh, in fact, the peak, the, the, the peak write uh, request rate can reach up to uh, 10,000 uh, requests per second, you know, uh, more than that. And also individual SSD server uh, device uh, are, are being written uh, uh, you know, more than three terabytes data per day, which is approaching uh, the, 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 the drive writes per day limit that strictly limit the amount of data written to any SSD for the sake of reliability. So if we uh, take a closer look, then we realize that not only they are heavily loaded, but also because of the high pressure, uh, you observe very long uh, request queues uh, on, on, on each of the SSD device, which in turn cause very high tail latency. For example, the 99 percentile tail latency is uh, in the excess of 10 milliseconds, and 99.9 .9 percentile tail latency is, is, is more than 50 milliseconds. And this is observed over four typical uh, production workloads at the Alibaba cloud. So on the other hand, we observed the 
HDDs are very lightly utilized. Uh, in fact, they are utilized at, uh, at most half, sometimes one-fifth of the utilization of, the, of their SSD counterparts. And most, uh, you know, in fact, more than 90% of the time they are actually idle, okay? So um, given this observation, uh, obviously we want to try to uh, leverage the idle, uh, the unused utilization uh, 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 resources of the HDD uh, to relieve the pressure, right pressure on SSD, not only for the performance purpose, but also for reliability, obviously, you know, because most of the requests are writes, 99% simply because the upper layer already have done all the filtering for uh, 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 write, uh, for read optimization. So, so the first challenge, obviously there are many challenges. Uh, the first challenge is how do you um, leverage HDDs, which we know are very low in, uh, uh, in, in access speed, right? Uh, the latency is, is in the uh, milliseconds uh, scale. Uh, well, you have the capacity; you can you can you can off offload the the traffic. But what about the performance, right? In fact, uh, we want to make sure that we can leverage the HDDs in such a way that uh, the 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 performance experienced by the request should be a, a, a sub millisecond because that's what the tail latency. Uh, experience at the Pangu server, right? So can actually uh, HDDs offer that level of uh, write performance, that is uh, microsecond level write latency? So to, to find the answer to that, uh, we did some extensive tests um, uh, using several representative uh, HDD uh, devices from the major vendors. Uh, here are some of uh, the, the, the five devices we use to conduct the test. So here are a glimpse uh, of, of the overall results, the five disks, five uh, HDD disks. And, and of course, right now it looks very messy, but you, 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 you pay a closer attention to that, you see some pattern, okay? So these are the patterns that we try to understand and, and, and then exploit uh, uh, the, the features to our advantage. So the first observation is that um, you see that HDD actually can reach microsecond level uh, write latency, particularly if you have uh, a small write request. Uh, I, I forgot to mention that to do this test, we want to, to find what's the best performance HDD can offer. Obviously, you know, we know continuous, uh, se uh, sequential continuous write is most friendly to HDD, so therefore we actually issue uh, a, a continuous and uh, a sequential request to uh, the devices and observe the, the performance. So in particular, for small requests here, the latency can be as low as uh, 35 uh, microseconds, for example, for four kilobyte writes, and 66 microseconds and 180 microseconds for larger request size. So they're all obviously sub millisecond. That's what we, we want. Um, however, <laughs> There's no free lunch, obviously. Otherwise, you know, HDD would be used uh, instead of SSD. So you see there are very high spikes of latency in the excess of uh, tens of uh, milliseconds, okay? So, so these are uh, the, the, the spikes, obviously, uh, due to the buffer flashing and, and, and so on and other uh, 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 reasons. So, a closer observation also tells us there is a, 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 a clear pattern, uh, and, and there is a period of low write latency, followed by spikes, and then some uh, mid-level 
uh, right literacy. Okay, so there is a clear uh, periodicity uh, in this uh, prof uh, behavior. So we want to, uh, 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 you know, exploit that. And further, by examining all the test data across different devices, we see this this pattern. That is, um, the length of the fast, fastest uh, write stage uh, typically is around 16 um, megabyte. That is, you can continue to write that amount of data, and the performance will remain that. And then uh, it will be uh, uh, interspersed with spikes, followed by a median level latency, which is um, uh, typically a period of 8 megabyte, or, or, or the amount of data 8 megabyte. So what are the reasons behind this? Well, probably you already guessed, you know, it's the buffer, right? So um, in all the HDD device, uh, now we have hundreds of uh, megabyte uh, buffer uh, DRAM uh, equipped in there. And of that uh, capacity, probably around 10% actually is used for write buffering. The rest are for read and, uh, and, and, and read ahead uh, and prefetching and so on, and metadata. But just that small fraction of the, the, the buffer is enough to provide us this, this very uh, uh, interesting opportunity, right? So that is, it actually can provide us with the microsecond level uh, write latency. But the question is now, how do we uh, leverage that latency in a controllable way, okay? So, in order to do that, we, uh, we, we, we uh, abstract the patterns into uh, this model. It's called the buffer write model. So if essentially, you have three distinctive states, uh, write states. Any request can only be in one of the, the write states. The, the first one is the fast uh, write uh, state, the, the low latency, followed by uh, several, one or more, uh, mid-slow pair uh, behavior. So the slow uh, uh, spike typically, obviously, is because of when, whenever the buffer reaches a threshold, the system will do a, a flushing of the buffer data into the media, okay? And then after that, the buffer is, 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 is empty and is, is work to go again, uh, going back to lower uh, right latency state. So, um, <clears throat> so here is what um, uh, it typically can happen in a sequence of, of uh, continuous uh, sequential write. Um, this is initiated uh, with a sync uh, instruction. So that force the buffer to be emptied. And then you start with a fast state uh, fast uh, right stage, which is then followed by uh, one or more slow and mid stage pairs, okay, as indicated here. So, in order to precisely leverage that behavior, uh, you need to be able to know exactly when you can write in those states, right? So, therefore, uh, we need to have a, a very accurate predictor, right, in runtime. So how do you do that? Fortunately, uh, for any device, we can measure externally to get some of the key parameters that will enable us to do this prediction. So uh, the, the key parameters would be the length of each stage, you know, in terms of the, the data written to it. So all you need to do is you, you, you measure, you monitor the amount of data written to each different state. Also, you can externally determine for a given device uh, the latency for a particular state, F, M, or S, uh, S, right? So given those parameters that you determined either uh, from the vendor or actually by measuring, then we can use this, this model. This, the, here is a state transition for the predictor. So um, if you are already in the fast state, right, uh, you, you, you can determine what the next 
right state is based on uh, the buffer status, which is either the amount of data, the accumulative amount of data written this far is less than or greater than the period uh, uh, data, right? So uh, if it's less, then uh, you stay in that state. If it's greater, then you are likely to go to the next state is likely going to be the S state. That's when uh, you reach the threshold you need to flush in the data, okay? And then after the S state, you go back to the M state, right? And that, that, that back and forth continues until this sequence of sequential continuous write uh, completes. And then you can initiate this same sequence by a sync operation. So it turns out actually um, with this simple predictor and, and experimentally determined parameters, we're able to fairly accurately predict the state, um, the right state for any given device. So here is uh, the, the buffer controlled write uh, scheme. The goal is to ensure uh, user writes to be in either F or M state while avoiding writes in the S uh, state. So you start with performing profiling uh, for all the key parameters required for the predictor. And then you invoke the sync operation to start this sequence. And then um, whenever you predict uh, the next state is F or M state, then you can uh, direct the user request, write request into HDD, okay? And then you continue. Um, so if the user request uh, queue is empty and you are still in a M or, or F or M state, then you pat a small amount of data so that you can continue the state a transition, right? The state is never uh, interrupted. So, and, and when the, con uh, the condition is met that you predict the next state is uh, S, then you, 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 you change to, um, to S state and you start patting larger amount of data. So patting the larger amount of data is to quickly force the system into the actual S state, force the flashing, right? So, um, and, and once you enter the S state, you stop receiving the user request. And you continue to, to pat the, the data. Uh, and finally, when you reach S state, then you go back to uh, the user, uh, to receiving user request. So this process uh, would continue for, you know, for, for, for the given state. So, so now we know that uh, given the, the predictor, we can uh, 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 provide a proactive and controllable buffer write strategy to leverage the observed uh, low latency write performance of H HDD. Now the remaining question is how to leverage this uh, buffer controlled write effectively uh, in a hybrid storage server, right? So here is, um, uh, in order to do that, we propose a mixed I.O. scheduler. So uh, in this I.O. scheduler, essentially, uh, we associate each device with a uh, request queue. And then we monitor uh, those request queue uh, at runtime. And also for HDD, each HDD we associate with a, a log file, which essentially is a device file storing the BCW writes in an append-only manner, okay? So, when for S SSD queue, for each queue we monitor, if the queue length uh, reaches a threshold, then we start redirecting the request from SSD to HDD, provided that the HDD is in one of the uh, writable state, you know, F or M. And also, uh, the HDD has a flag to indicate whether or not it can actually accept that. You know, if it's in the S state or it's, it's re, uh, uh, serving 
uh, read requests, then uh, it, it cannot receive any of the redirected uh, requests. So the key here is to determine the threshold, right? Uh, when to redirect. The, the answer is fairly in, intuitive, right? You want to redirect a request from SSD to HDD whenever a request uh, based on the current queue length is expected to experience longer delay than the, de the, the latency, right latency in an M state in the HDD, right? So, so, so whenever that happens, then you redirect and you're going to gain, right? Um, so, so it's very simple uh, intuitive. So we use that as, as a, 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 a threshold. So with that in mind, we have two uh, scheduling models. One is the conservative one, which means that we only redirect requests when uh, the, the queue length on the SSD uh, is longer than the threshold. So, so essentially trying to cut down the tail latency, right? The, the, the removing the blocking. Uh, the other one is more aggressive, meant for reducing the amount of write to SSD, which is uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, E mode. So which can actually uh, redirect request even before you meet, you reach the threshold, okay? And also we only direct request when the HDD is in the F state. So this is very aggressive, you know, trying to remove as much write traffic from SSD to HDD as possible. So uh, while well, there are many other details in the paper, uh, now I'm going to quickly uh, show the uh, evaluation result. So we, we use the, we use the, okay, sorry, there's just one more minute. <laughs> uh, so we use the, the, the four uh, production workload and also the um, uh, several HDD and SSD, uh, I think the, 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 the uh, representative ones. And then we conduct uh, experiment. First of all, uh, here is the right performance. So we, we, we run three modes, the, the baseline, the conservative uh, uh, redirecting. Uh, so here we are only comparing baseline and the conservative. So here we can see that the, uh, the BCW approach is most effective when uh, the, the, the workload is, is highly, um, uh, you know, write intensive, which is uh, workload B. So for that, uh, the most benefit uh, manifest in cutting the tail latency. So, so we cut the tail latency by 95%. Uh, and the reason behind that is, as you can see, here is the, uh, the, the Q length reduction right, on the SSD. For the workload B, we reduce the Q length the most, okay, thereby removing, uh, relieving the SSD, the, 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 the tail latency uh, pressure. Okay? For others, we, 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 uh, because of the workload is low, you don't remove that much. And uh, the amount of data uh, 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 written to SSD uh, reduced is also uh, indicated here. As you can see, if you use the aggressive uh, uh, scheduling approach, the amount of data re 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 reduced is most significant, right? For example, for uh, workload A, up to 93% data removed from SSD, so which is good if you are, your objective is for reliability and so on, right? Um, so um, also the comparison between the conservative one and the aggressive one, obviously there is a trade-off. Uh, you know, you're trading off the performance uh, for reliability uh, and, 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 and so on, okay? Um, we also experiment on, uh, so the results shown so far are based on the 10 gigabyte uh, uh, HDD but also we, we, we conduct experiment on all the other HDDs. It turns out uh, the, the, the vendors and, and, and the product really have little to, uh, to do with, you know, so it, it doesn't change the, the, the final result, okay? So here is the end of my presentation. Uh, welcome questions.
Uh, questions? Um, please remember to introduce yourself at the microphones. Hi, uh, Brent Welch at Google. Um, so I have a two two part question. The uh, how do you keep track of where the data is? So what does this mean to the file system on top? Um, because sometimes the data you want is on the hard drive and not on the SSD. So I think uh, at this point we we actually uh, the implementation is based on the file system on top of file system, but. Uh, the observation and also the, um, uh, the, the, the monitoring and then the activation is at the, still at the uh, block level, block device level. So we haven't, that's a good question, we haven't really uh, investigated you know, the correlation with file system, uh, uh, the relationship there. Right, because it's related to you wrote less data to the hard drive afterwards, but again, it's a, uh, Interesting to keep track of where your data is. That's obviously important for your higher level storage system. Um, the, uh, another comment, um, we found in a past life for me that we would write small files and metadata to the SSD and we would just write large data extents to the uh, hard drive and the file system knew exactly what it was doing. So you just, you don't pollute the SSD with megabytes of high bandwidth data which fits naturally on the hard drive. That, that's true, but in, in, in the observation of this four uh, production workload, it turns out the vast majority of requests are small. Actually, they are, they are of size 10 kilobyte or smaller. Okay, yeah, like I said, it depends on right. the workload that's on top of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Juan, AWS. Uh, so I, I like the idea. The only thing that I was thinking is uh, when when you're, when you're trying to figure out if the drive is in the fast mode, you're guessing. So did you measure how much of those guesses were right and incorrect? And did you also explore, like, I was thinking, if you have a vendor-specific command, you can just ask the drive, right? So yeah, so, yeah we, we actually is uh, reported in the paper. So the prediction for being in the F state is, I think, 90A, or 99% accurate. Uh, the prediction for being in the M state is, is equally is 98 or, or 97%. Okay. But the prediction for S state is 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 lower, like 60%. Uh, this is this is uh, uh, deliberately to earn on the side of of, of of safety because you you don't want to uh, to have a false positive or, or you know so that because the the penalty is too high for being mispredicted on uh, uh, force, actually, force negative is, is the penalty is too high for S state, yes. Thanks. Time for one more question. Paul Taysom, Datrium. Did you consider using non-bottled RAM to collect small writes into large writes so you can better utilize the hard drives? Uh, we haven't, but that's a very good suggestion. So we did observe that uh, this, if, this, this, this approach is most effective when the requests are small, request mm -hmm. size is small. But when the request size uh, it becomes large, uh, actually SSD turn, turned out to be more advantageous to absorb uh, in terms of performance. Thank you. Yes. Let's thank our speaker again.